Uh, and the intention of this is obviously just to, to review um, some of the incidents. All I've done is I've picked out a couple of incidents, all right, from uh, 2019, okay. Uh, there is some videos, okay, that we will be seeing, all right. Uh, we will be doing it in conjunction, both Noel and myself, all right, and just giving you a little bit of background as to what took place in the incident, review it, and we'll see whether we can improve, et cetera, et cetera, all right. So uh, I've picked out about 10 case studies uh, from 2019, so I'm going to try and rattle through this as quick as I can, but not without covering the basics, all right, because obviously we're now eating into Mark's time, so I'm a little bit conscious of that. Right, so first case study, yeah, in, uh, on the 18th of April last year, all right, we had a tandem instructor exited the aircraft with no altimeter. Straight away, breach of the operations manual. It was reported to us, everything else, okay. Um, tandem instructor had 565 tandems, 84 in the previous three months. So again, current. So what took place here is tandem instructor got on the flight line. He received a flight line check by a fellow instructor, all right. And what happened is as the instructor went around the back of the tandem instructor to check the back of the tandem system, um, he said the obvious, have you got your hat, have you got your alti, have you got your goggles, all that good stuff, and he didn't physically check it, all right? And what did the instructor say? Yes, I have. Got on board the aircraft, all right? And then as the aircraft took off, he then suddenly realized he didn't have his altimeter, all right? Um, he then got offered an altimeter in the aircraft. The altimeter was in meters and not feet. He didn't like that. He chose not to have it, okay? He then proceeded, went to 10,000 feet, and exited the aircraft, all right? And as you can see there, all right, blatantly exited the plane, didn't have the LT, all right? However, the skydive went well, deployed, okay, and landed safely, all right? The good thing is, they obviously reported the incident to us straight away, which is good, all right? Uh, and because he obviously breached the operations manual, he was suspended for a period of about a month and a half, all right? And then he gained the rating back, all right? Right, um, 23rd of um, July, main container opening in, in Drogue 4 here. So, Noel knows all the ins and outs and that, exactly why this happened, okay. Um, it was a packing error and it was from actually the equipment got assembled, is that right? And it, then... It was an SWS fire, which has the centre lift point with uh, the three ring release. And you normally, before you fold the Drogue riser part, uh, you normally you put the pin in to close the container. What had happened was the guy had folded that because it's a system he wasn't he uh, wasn't quite used to. He folded it and then put the pin in from the wrong end. So what happened in drogue for it started to pull the pin and the vibration gradually pulled the pin out. Now and he was like he couldn't believe how he did it because it's even colour coded the ends to match up together. So it's a, it's and that's uh, somebody who jumps a lot of uh, next system tried the SWS one. And then was and, and that was that was the error. Uh, it was it was a packing one. Uh, it wasn't a, you know he put he put his hands up to it immediately. Yeah, and he'd done the previous descent on that system that day as well. Obviously, then landed, packed it, and then on the second jump, that's when the incident happened. All right, uh, tandem instructor, eight thousand tandems, eighteen in the previous three months, so relatively current. This is a video of the actual uh, premature opening. coming down, the pin was going up and it vibrated out and that was okay. <coughs> okay, so initiated emergency procedures. Luckily enough, there was no entanglement between the uh, main, uh, the bag and the reserve, okay, and the pair landed safely. All right, so again, it's just ensuring that we keep it on top, all right, and if we're unfamiliar with the systems, we need to familiarize with the systems, packing methods, etc. Uh, third one, so July 19, um, we had an out-of-sequence uh, deployment, and this was on the tandem instructor course. Again, it was the individual's fourth bag jump, all right, which is the unstable exit, drogueless turns, all right, so he did unstable exit, did his drogueless turns, forgot to set the drogue, okay? Uh, and then, obviously, uh, pulled the primary release, nothing happened, pulled secondary, nothing happened, and then he pulled his um, uh, reserve, all right? And then, after that, he was not allowed to continue on the course, all right? So... Jumping bags, for those that come on the courses, okay, as qualified instructors, we know it's easy, okay, some people might be really confident, all right, after a few tandem jumps, think, oh, this is not as bad as it is, all right, you get complacent, and that's what happens, 
all right? So again, if you are mentoring or coaching people, they're gonna be coming on the courses, please remind them, do not get complacent, okay? Do not get too confident. Uh, July 19, tandem canopy collision on landing. All right, we have got video of this and I'm gonna show you in a minute, all right? Noel's just touched up on it, all right? We could have potentially had a double fatality if that had happened any higher, all right? Now, uh, the instructor one, which is, instructor one will be the higher tandem instructor, yep? He now, well, he had 8,260 tandems and he'd done 67 in the previous three months. Instructor two, 4,000 tandems, all right, 100 in the previous three months. Now, what happened here is they actually caught up with each other at 1,000 feet, yeah? And then they initiated their landing patterns, okay? Both instructors were unaware of each other, all right, coming into land, or that's what they say, we did not see each other, all right? This is how it happened. So let's look at the video. All right, so you can see there, they're coming in. The, the bottom instructor is now on finals, all right? Let's have a look. All right, so we'll play that one more time. Okay, so very, very lucky. Combination of things, really. If we go back, all right, the, the, the footage is being filmed by the camera person filming the yellow canopy. That camera person is directly behind the camera filming the blue canopy. Okay, so the, the tandem instructors are heading towards their camera. Okay, directly one behind the, the other. All right, so two things. Cameramen are positioned in the one place. They should be separated, all right? And, uh, and again, we should have an idea of what to do if we're catching people up under canopy, all right? So it's a good thing all right, to have a plan on the ground to brief, all right? If I end up catching you up, I have this signal. That means I'm going to go ahead of you something okay well having a plan on the ground is, is very important now after the incident the chief instructor got everybody in okay and everybody was briefed on exactly what they needed to do or what the chief instructor wanted them to do all right camera people all right and <coughs> instructors all right so uh, the jobs and obviously took this very very seriously all right and they put their measures in place and everything went into the safety management system now this is taken this is from the footage from the um camera filming the blue canopy, all right? And as you can see there, I mean, the, the, the bottom canopy, there's no way I think they would have seen where that yellow canopy was, all right? So the responsibility lies again on the top <coughs> canopy, all right? And then you can see at that stage there, all right, just going through, all right? And that's how the, the instructor landed, okay? And again, very lucky that nobody was injured, all right? The footage, okay, from this, you can actually hear the tandem student that was wrapped in the blue canopy screaming. All right, it's quite shocking. All right, got away with that one. Um, so, July 19, another equipment issue, broken kill line. Okay, 800 tandems from the tandem instructor, 120 in the previous month, uh, three months. So, this is the footage of the broken kill line. Watch how fast it goes. Drill release, and he's gone. Yeah, so luckily enough, okay, and this situation here, he pulled the drill release, kill line snapped, and it snapped, all right, where, what's that called again? It, sna it's, it snapped at the top of the short section. So it was at the, where the connector link is, attaching it to the one inch tape at the top of the drogue. And <coughs> the, the, the thinking behind it is that there wasn't a piece of, there's normally a piece of rubber pipe on there, uh, uh, which is to stop the movement, because it's not Lark's headed on. And so I think without the rubber pipe, that it's worn through, it's, it's worn the component, uh, because then you can get the vibration between it. Uh, and the issue was that the, uh, the drogue had been changed have been put on and the jump numbers have been zeroed, zeroed. Uh, 300 jumps before and the drogue had already done 400 jumps so the kill line had done like 700 jumps I think it was. So again it was it was a combination of, of error within the paperwork 
Yeah, so the, the, the kill line or the drug have been replaced, but with a drug that already been used. But the, the amount of jumps did not go into the blue book. All right, so the blue books are really good, but unless we're putting the correct information to the blue books, we're not gonna be seeing how much jumps are getting put onto the component parts, <laughs> all right? So again, please pay attention to how we uh, fill in the information into the books. Um, and at this stage here, you can just see how the, the container is open in the bag. Okay, the bag actually lifts out. Now, the tunnel instructor said, okay, he could feel the burble, all right, the bag bouncing around, so he opted to cut away on that one. Okay, he cut away and then pulled his reserve. Okay, from this incident, then we reviewed, all right, as part of the working group, we reviewed the drills, and now we're looking at changing the fact that we're going to be introducing a cutaway as part of the reserve drill. Okay. Um, August 19, student broken femur. We've got no footage on this one, okay, all right, but it's quite a, a, a I think it's a key one because uh, Noel's already touched up on it, all right. There's a, there's a number of things that could have been prevented here, okay, which, which I believe could have definitely been prevented. Now, um, tandem instructor had 15 tandems. Now, this happened in August. Tandem instructor got qualified in July. He did his tandem instructor course in July. Um, the student was 79 years of age, all right, and the student was, I believe he had terminal cancer, all right, so this is one of the things he wanted to do, always wanted to do, go and do a skydive, okay. The medical restricted the um, student to 8,000 feet, so now we, adult, we only have, we have a very inexperienced tandem instructor, with what I see as a vulnerable student because of the age, okay, and we're putting the tandem instructor at 8,000 feet as well. Okay, so there's, you know, I've got, I'm not putting put blame here at anybody, okay, this is, this is something I wanted to bring up so that we can all learn from this, okay. A tandem instructor is qualified, okay, he is a tandem, qualified tandem instructor, he can do that, all right. It's the duty of care that we have, all right, the operators need to consider all right, is it a sensible thing to put the least experienced tandem instructor with a vulnerable person, age-wise? Not a wise thing in my opinion, okay? So it should have been the most experienced tandem instructor that took that individual, all right? And the winds on the ground were eight knots. Again, we can put added SOPs in place, okay? We, we can say, right, we put a wind limit on because we don't want you to injure yourself or anything like that, we can uh, be jumping in stronger winds perhaps. Okay, so there's a key things that I think the PTO could certainly learn from that. And that my understanding is they now, all right, learn from that after I spoke to the operator. All right. Uh, so again, we, we spoke about this one earlier. The, the thing, this is a good example. Obviously, it was highlighted because they had the incident previously. Okay, but again, this will tie in hopefully with something that Mark will talk about, which is the observation strategy. We don't just check the canopy. Yeah, we're good. We then make sure that the hooks are still good and everything else. And then we just crack on. It's maintaining and observing other areas that perhaps we're not used to, okay? And like I said, uh, Noel said, he made a judgment call, couldn't see the, the um, what's it called again, the screw, the barrel, okay, and he elected to cut away, all right? Right, October 19, aircraft emergency at 4,200 feet, yeah? The on board, there was a tandem pair and the videographer and two experienced skydivers, all right? They all got out at 4,200 feet. The tandem instructor gained his rating in August, all right? So again, not particularly experienced, but my understanding is he dealt with that emergency extremely well. Very calm, very collective, all right, and applied himself very well. They all exited, all landed safely, no issues, all right? So good example again. All right, and this is, the, this is some of the stuff that we want to be, again, coaching and mentoring, all right, and, not, and to be prepared for when it does happen. All right, luckily enough, on this occasion, the aircraft was a small aircraft, Cessna 206, all right. Most of our job zones have caravans, if not packs, and they're quite, you know, considerable in size, all right. Aircraft emergency on that, and then everybody's fighting to get out, all right. So good practice, okay, talk about those scenarios. Okay, and second um, broken kill line in 2019, yeah? 
Tournament with 2,045 tandems, 55 in the previous three months. All right. However, that jump was the first jump on the set of kit after they just had a repack from the six-month inspection. <coughs> All right. And the kill line snapped. It snapped. Yeah, it snapped the to the next system uh, where you've got the short section which stops the drogue fully collapsing. It snapped at that point. Okay. Um inside the knot broke. Alright, and I'll be honest, it's not I would I there'd be hundreds of the hundreds of inspections on next. I don't take the knot apart to have a look at it because the knot's so tight together. You look at it to see if there's any damage. But I think it was damaged inside them and it's it snapped at that point. I've never seen one snap at that point. I've only ever seen a snap right at the top, <coughs> like Dylan's or generally at the bottom when they were getting pulled out uh, around the flat three as the pin gets pulled. Um, I've, so I've never seen one snap at that point before, but it's just something for people to be aware of that it, they can snap anywhere, halfway up at the bottom, at the top. So don't just assume that they're going to, you know, that they're going to go at, the, at either end. That particular kill line had five hundred and eighty-six jumps on it. Yeah. So again, just touching up very quickly on what Noel mentioned earlier. All right, we've now introduced a set of guidelines, okay, that will help us assess, okay, what the serviceability of the component parts are. Now, I just want to remind you, some manufacturers already have guidelines on that, okay? So if a manufacturer stipulates a guideline on component parts, we'd expect you to adhere to those guidelines, okay, i.e. the manufacturers. However, for those manufacturers that do not have the guidelines, this is a rough guide, okay, um, for people to be aware of. Now, it's some of you might not be involved with any of the maintenance of the equipment or anything else, okay? But like Noel said, there's no harm in flicking through the blue books occasionally and just to see how those component parts are doing in terms of jump numbers, all right? Um, and that's on Form 281. That's page two now of Form 281, all right? So have a read of that, familiarize yourself with that, okay? And, um, you know, bear, bear it in mind if you are working with the kit, okay? Right, so November 19, we had an AAD activation. Now, some of you may have heard about this incident, okay? Um, tandem instructor the hand, at the time had 225 tandems, 102 in the previous three months. Now, what happened on this one is we know the... Um, so he, he went in free force at the Joe, did a session share, carried on the skydive, 6,000 feet, waved, Pulled, okay, canopy deployed. As the canopy deployed, he experienced a very violent malfunction that was spinning him, okay? As the malfunction was spinning him, all right, it, dis it dislodged the position of the emergency handles, which meant the cutaway handle was now roughly in about this position up here, okay? He could not locate his reserve handle, right? He couldn't find it. So he elected to carry out the cutaway. So he pulled his cutaway pad, all right, and as he cut away, he carried on in free fall. The RSL did not pull the reserve pin. He continued in free fall. He could not find his reserve handle. He then noticed the RSL was flapping on the side. He attempted to grab the RSL. He couldn't find it because he wanted to pull it to give himself a, a reserve activation. Couldn't do it, and then the AAD activated the reserve. All right, like Noel said, according to our records, this is the first AAD activation, all right, where the AAD has done exactly what it's designed to do. All right, very, very serious. Okay, now we know, all right, and this is a, a taken from uh, photos in the aircraft prior to exit. Now, there was no video okay, on that, um, on that particular jump, all right? But you can see there, all right, all right, probably perhaps the one on the right is a little bit too grainy, okay? You can probably make it out better than the one on the left, okay? But the RSL was connected, all right? So at some stage, throughout the violent malfunction, the RSL became disconnected, all right? Um, my understanding is the instructor does not want to do tandems anymore. All right, it really shocked him, okay? Um, so hopefully, after a few months or whatever, if he comes back, he'll probably have a change of heart, but at the minute, I don't think he wants to carry on. All right, that's how much it scared him. 
right. So from that incident, we then put out the safety information, okay, on tandem skydiving, all right? So some of you, hopefully you've seen it, all right? And it's just given some uh, points across of things to consider, all right? Uh, one of the ones to consider, and this is, you know, it's, do, do chief instructors really think the tandem instructor should be wearing a full-face helmet, perhaps, okay? Does the type of full-face helmet that the instructor is wearing allow you to see the RSL properly, okay? We're asking people to check the strength of the RSLs, all right? Now, this incident happened on a next system, okay? We have been in contact with the manufacturer, all right? And the manufacturers are now considering changing the type of RSL shackle from, this, from the brass to the stainless steels, okay? Um, and also, we know that this type of incident, i.e. the disconnection of the RSL, is not an isolated incident, all right? We now know that people have experienced this before, all right? Have landed, noticed the RSL was disconnected, okay? Probably noticed it when they were packing and stuff like that, okay? So we think, okay, that sometimes the RSL can very easily become disconnected, all right? So again, this went out to the drop zones. Please check your RSLs, check your equipment, do uh, strength tests on them, et cetera, et cetera, all right? Okay, very quickly. We want to look at the tandem fatalities. What you've got in there is a graph, okay, of how many tandem fatalities that have been reported, okay, going back since uh, 84. No. Is it? Okay, going back there. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to concentrate on the last two years. So that will be uh, 2018 and 2019. All right, so we'll go through this very, very quickly. All right, so in 2018, there was three fatalities, one in New Zealand, uh, one fatality in Russia, one fatality in the USA. All right, 2019, fatality in Mexico, and two in the USA. Right, 2018, uh, Queenstown, New Zealand. You might have heard the one where the tandem instructor ended up in the lake. Anyone familiar with that one? No? Okay, we'll talk about that. So tandem pair experience, a water landing resulted in a student not being found. All right, tandem instructor survives. Now, this is not from that footage, okay, but it's footage that um, I got my hands on because it was given to me by one of the instructors that actually happened to be um, at the job zone at the time when, when the incident took place, okay. But the type of incident, okay, what led to, to, to the tandem pair landing in the water, okay, was this. So the tandem instructor experienced twists, okay. He then initiated his emergency procedure, all right, and what we've got in this one, okay, um, that's the lake, okay, and the drop zone, all right, that there is the edge of the PLA right there, okay. Now, like I said, this is not footage from the incident, but at the time of the incident, the, my understanding is the tandem pair were actually further away as well, yeah. Now, that lake is quite, uh, it's freezing cold, although the incident happened in January, okay. The lake is freezing, it's like glacier water, freezing cold, all right, very volatile in terms of tides and stuff like that. All right, and it's absolutely massive. So there's the PLA, and that's where the tandem pair ended up. And the reason why they ended up in the water is because after the tandem instructor initiated his reserve drill, okay, he then experienced tension knots on the reserve, okay, giving him uh, a malfunction on the reserve, and they ended up in the water. Now, whilst they were getting ready to go in the water, okay, my understanding is the instructor uh, instructed the student to inflate the life jacket. Student inflated the life jacket, life jacket did not work. Okay, you just know it's going to happen, don't you? All right, now they briefed up everything else, um, went into the water, okay. As soon as they were in the water, the tunnel instructor actually put air into the student's jacket. Yeah. Then, the uh, student sorted, I'm going to sort myself. Went back, tried to get himself out of some lines and stuff like that. I had the harness, looked back, student's gone. Just like that. Disappeared. Okay. Um, so the instructor did everything right. That's my understanding. Okay. I was unfortunate with the student. And uh, I think it took six minutes to get to the instructor after they landed in the water. All right. So... It's, it's an unfortunate event. Sorry, uh, Billy, do you want to say something? No? Okay. 
Okay, um, so the other one in Russia, I've not got a lot of information about this. Maybe Mark might have a little bit more on that, no? Okay, so there was an outer sequence deployment or malfunction, okay, and a plus A reserve malfunction as well. All right, instructor suffered fatal injury and the student survived. Okay, that's as much information as I've got on, on, on that one. Um, and this one here, you may have heard about that one, but that's what the, the instructor actually fell out of his harness. Okay, now what happened here is the student, all the student remembers is seeing the instructor's legs come to about here and then disappear. All right, so the student was then left in the student harness with the container, okay, and eventually figured out that, they, the sh that he could steer the canopy by putting an input into the harness. So he steered himself, right, and managed to get to where he wanted to go, but eventually landed in some trees, but he survived. Okay, which is good. Now, uh, I think the assumption on that is that the instructor did commit suicide because when they inspected the equipment, the actual length of the leg straps, the leg straps were loosened off. So they assume that he may have committed um, the suicide, but they've not categorized it as that, I think. Yeah, a lot of stuff he did prior to the jump, contacting people and stuff, it led everything, all, all the right. evidence led to suicide. Okay, yeah. there you go. Thanks, Mark. So, yeah, that's another unfortunate one. <laughs> Right, very quickly, moving into 2019. Anybody here about the one in Mexico? Low cutaway? No? So uh, it was a low cutaway double fatality. Now, what happened with this one, let's go back there. Um, the skydive went well, main deployed fine. Instructor is steering uh, the canopy. What he'd done, he disconnected his laterals, left them disconnected. After opening? After opening, the high winds. All right, okay. So because of the, the, the strength of the, of the winds, he then disconnected the RSL. So he then initiated a quite a steep turn, and the student toggle got caught in the ejector clip. All right? So now he had the built-in turn into the canopy. All right? So he carried on spiraling, losing quite a lot of altitude. All right? And then he opted to cut away. As he cut away, the actual steering toggle came out of the ejector, all right? And somehow, the student managed to get hold of the cutaway pad, all right? And that's how they found the bodies, with the student with the cutaway pad in the hand. So I think first impressions were the student pulled the cutaway pad at a low altitude, all right? But what caused it was actually having the side connectors disconnected, all right? So you disconnect, loosen off, reconnect, reclip every time. Okay? So, premature deployment in the aircraft. All right, this was, I believe it was a Cessna, all right, and the, uh, the reserve pilot chute, all right, got dislodged, or the pin, the reserve pin got dislodged, the reserve pilot chute came out, dragged the pair out, killing the instructor instantly, okay, as they, as they exited the aircraft, okay. Um, the student had minor injuries from the um, premature deployment, but lost the shoes. Okay. Again, luckily enough, pretty big desert. Landed in the desert. All right. Nobody around. All right. Completely in the middle of nowhere. Instructor's now dead. She managed to free herself. All right. From 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 the body. Took the instructor's shoes and walked about a mile and something to the nearest road and flagged for help. <laughs> All right, um, so there you go. And finally, okay, the uh, second fatality in, in the States happened in Arizona. All right, and it was a low turn. You may have heard on the news that it was a British person died in the Grand Canyon. Anybody hear that? Yeah, it was a British student. Okay, um, so the instructor had 300 tandems, and he lied to the operators. I think you needed to have a minimum of 1,000 tandems to operate in the Grand Canyon. Okay, he lied, got a job, all right. He went out, did the tandem. Now, on that particular day, the upper winds were quite strong, so they took a deep spot, all right, exited, and as he was doing his wind checks, he probably did a little bit too much of a wind check, all right, and he just stayed upwind for too long, 
So when he decided to start coming back, he was now under pressure to get back and then suddenly too low, turned the canopy and impacted on the ground, all right, killing the student. Um, so that's a very quick summary of the, the, the fatalities that have taken uh, place in 2018 and 2019. Yeah, thank you very much.